I'm Lisa. I'm Hannah. And I'm Andre. Welcome to Creative Kids Become a Dancer. We're filming today live at the National Theatre Ballet School in St Kilda. In this episode, we're going to teach you how to enter into a career in dance. We'll cover things such as how and where you can begin dancing, where a dance career can take you, the creative side and the health needs, and the awesomeness of being, of being a dancer. dancer. So hang on to your tutus and let's get to it. Most of us have our first experience with dance from a really young age. I mean, have you ever seen how little kids just dance and bop along to music? It's the most normal thing in the world. That's right, it's something we all naturally do. And that's what makes it so cool that dancing is an actual job. And there are more ways to become a dancer than there's ever been before. With heaps new dance styles emerging all the time. Some of the different performance areas you can aim for are professional ballet or contemporary companies, unique dance style jobs like being a hip hop dancer for a music video, theme park or cruise ship performers, contract dancing for musicals or stage shows, or how about even a break dancer in a troupe? Yeah, and then your dance career can lead you into being a dance director, producer, choreographer, or how about being the teacher yourself? Now you've got a TV job on ABC3 presenting, mm -hmm. so that, that must be pretty fun, pretty cool. Um, how did you get the job? And, yeah. Well, there's a funny story behind that, isn't there, Jess? <laughs> uh, it's really funny, right? We were doing Australia's Got Talent. Yeah. We were a couple, we're boyfriend and girlfriend, we lived together, and we went for Australia's Got Talent, and we went for ABC at the same time. So as Team Rocket, we did Australia's Got Talent, we auditioned for the producer rounds, and as ABC, we went in there as separate talent. Yeah. Now, they didn't know we were a couple, and we went through three auditions at ABC before we got to the very final callbacks. The final callbacks in Australia for my job that I'm doing right now were me and Jess and one other guy, and they had no idea we were in a relationship. The only reason, and I don't mean to unsell myself, <laughs> but the only reason that I got the job on the show was because they were looking for a guy. If, they were, if it was a Tuesday instead of a Monday, Jess would have got the job. And that's funny, man, but that's, that's what's hard about this industry as well, yeah. is we were a couple and we're versing each other at yeah. things, you know? It's, it's really hard, but all in all, bro, it's such a great job. I love it every day. It's doing what you're doing right now. You know, sometimes I'm a grandma, sometimes I'm a dinosaur, <laughs> sometimes I'm me, I get to interview sick people, you know, but as far as getting the job, it was just auditions. You gotta be at the right place, the right yeah. time. And James Brown always said, you don't have to get ready if you stay ready. And that's what I was, just, just a place. <laughs> Ashley has been to America and modelled with Sophia Lucia and also has met all the Dance Mom stars. You've been in two musicals and a couple of TV series. Mm -hmm. Hi, Ashley. Hi. <laughs> what got you big, like popularity rise? I went to this studio last year where I have my teacher, who is my teacher now, Miss Rebecca, and she helped me become a better dancer and then I got an Instagram account and I started posting photos of me dancing and videos of me doing improv and just random tricks and things like that and then it started to grow and people started following me and I think that's how it happened. <laughs> Two of the main dance styles are ballet and contemporary, with lots of other styles falling under the umbrella of modern dance, such as jazz, tap, Broadway, hip hop. Ballet dancers are especially known to be in dancing at a young age. This is because the working career of a professional ballet dancer begins quite early, with contracts with companies at around 16 to 18 years of age, and with dancing careers generally peaking around the mid 20s. Well, contemporary dancers, on the other hand, get to have a longer career. That means they can start dancing later than ballet dancers and also dance till they're much older. But you can always do both. I mean, a lot of contemporary dancers were first ballet trained. But you just have to remember that it can be quite challenging to move from one dance style to another because there's a different skill set involved. Yeah, for example, ballet focuses on the extension of the limbs and the strong lines with alignment of the posture whereas hip hop focuses on the isolation of different parts of the body, like the torso and chest moving to different beats. Can you name all of your dance classes? Okay, jazz, contemporary, lyrical, tap, ballet, acro, hip hop, and I think that's it. Ah, oh, seven. Yeah. <laughs> that's a lot. Many people who decide they want to become a dancer begin seriously training while they're still in school. If you begin dancing later than high school, you may be considered a late bloomer. 
I know it's crazy, but it's true. Hi, I'm at the Australian Ballet Centre today with two of its dancers, now Imogen and Luke. Thanks for having me today. Um, first question, when did you guys know you wanted to become a dancer? Um, I think I was about 11 years old when I first knew that that was what I really wanted to do. I um, got a position extraing with the company in their production of The Nutcracker. Um, so that was very exciting for me. I got to dance on stage and dance at the Sydney Opera House. So that was when I knew. Um, well, I was very young when I started. I was about three. Um, always loved it, loved it, did it just for fun. Up until I was about probably 11 as well, I got the opportunity to come to the Australian Bias School from Perth. And so I sort of decided to move over here with my family. And yeah, that was when I really made the commitment to sort of try and make this my career. Um, for you guys, what would you say is the best part about being a dancer? Uh, my favourite part is the performing, it's the getting on stage and um, you know, seeing all the bright lights and knowing that there's an audience out there and you know, doing what you've um, worked so hard for um, in the studio to do that on stage, you know, just not thinking about it and enjoying yourself. So. Yeah, I mean, like Luke said, it's an amazing feeling. You've been on stage, you've kind of felt that, you felt the audience, you know, really appreciating what you're doing and then you get off stage and you're like, oh, it feels so good, like you feel like you've really achieved something. So that's, yeah, it's really the best part of it. Yeah, it's a real buzz. Yeah. <laughs> oh, with that in mind, what would you say is the hardest thing to be a dancer? Oh gosh, the hardest thing, um, probably, you know, keeping that confidence, you know, because things don't always go um, as you plan out on stage. So, you know, quick thinking is a, um, an integral part of, you know, what we do. So keeping that in mind just get out there and do it. So. Yeah, I mean, it is a lot of hard work. You've really got to train hard and work hard and there's lots of long hours. Um, and also, sometimes you've got to battle with a bit of injury and, you know, keeping your body fit. So that's, that's often quite difficult. But again, it's so rewarding when you get out on stage. So that's all worth it. In Australia, we're really lucky that in our schools we have some great programs like Top Arts, VCA Dance and the Rock of Stedford that you can get involved in. In your local area, you should be able to find independent dance schools, local amateur musical theatre groups and once a year in your town you might even get a chance to try some workshops with the Australian Dance Festival. This is a career where you definitely shouldn't be afraid to start early and see where it takes you. Paul is Australia's rock star dancer and choreographer, basically, aren't you? Yes, you are. Once upon a time. Don't be bashful. <laughs> a life lived in fear is a life half lived. What's that from? I don't know. Strictly ballroom. Is that? <laughs> so that was the, the whole premise of, of Strictly Ballroom, a life, half, a life lived in fear is a life half lived. And, you know, it's true, if you want to go and try something but you're scared, all the better, you know. It's, it is life is about um, pushing boundaries and pushing yourself. And if you if you're going to live uh, with fear, then you're not actually going to do anything. Are you? How old were you when you started dancing? I was about three years old when I started dancing, and I started dancing at this studio that was really close to my house. And I quit then after about one lesson because I wanted to go on stage, that's all I wanted to do. I didn't want to do the practice. And then I started again back when I was about six or seven. And then I started doing it all through then until I was about nine years old and that's when I started to take dancing really seriously. When it comes to studying dance, you have so many options. There are arts-focused secondary schools, university degrees, private dance colleges, and full-time programs or just casual classes. To find a good dance school that suits you, research on the internet, check out forums and read reviews. Also, research the work that previous students have gone on to do. But if you're really unsure, just pick somewhere that sounds like fun and give it a try. A lot of the time it's about getting in there and meeting new people. So they're talking about the ministry, you both train at Jason Coleman's Ministry of Dance. Why did you choose this school? It was, it was awesome. I mean. It was, it's such a big place. I think it's like the, what is it, the biggest school in the Southern Hemisphere? Southern Hemisphere? hemisphere? Yeah. Biggest school in the Southern Hemisphere. That's intriguing to me. Jason's the god of Australian dance. It's just like, I'm just going to go there and meet him and then leave. But then I stayed. It was awesome. 
Yeah. And she was there? Yeah, I just really wanted to move to Melbourne, over Sydney or Brisbane or anything. And it was the first year, and I loved Jason from So You Think. Yeah, it was just so exciting, and it just had such a... I think the best thing about the Ministry of Dance is it has this um, family orientation to it, you know? Like, it's not, it's not competition, you're not trying to beat the person next to you, they grow with you, the teachers grow with you, you become friends with the teachers, yeah. you're friends with Jason. Jason's like a brother to me now, you know? And, so this is a healthy environment to start dancing because it can be very yeah. scary. The term choreography literally means dance writing. It's the design of dance steps. So if you think of improvising, which is where everything is just free, you make it up. Choreography is the opposite, where there is a set sequence of steps for you to follow. You can dance without music, but when it comes to choreography, you can get a lot of inspiration by listening to the music's timing, its patterns, its beats, and then design the dance to fit that music. You go to a company, there's a choreographer, or they bring in choreographers and you learn the steps and before. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, I very much have always choreographed right from, you know, the beginning. And so I kind of said to Graham, I really want to do some choreography. So yeah. we used to do workshops, and a lot of companies will do workshops to allow the younger dancers to express themselves through choreography. Yeah, and that's good. Often, like, you know, the Australian Ballet have done workshops and Stephen Baines now is one of their mm -hmm. choreographers and he came up for workshops. It also depends, you know, what your, um, you know, what your inspiration is and what sort of choreography you want to be, you know. I, I'm a storyteller, you know, when I choreograph it's telling a story. Mm -hmm. and there are other people that are very modern and intellectual and stuff and yeah. they're different. I, I don't, I don't understand like art, that. Like art house kind of. Well, I'd like to think my ballets are art house, but you know, the yeah. really full on intellectual, conceptualised sort of stuff, that's not my cup of tea and that's not what I do. Yeah. And nor am I classical, you know, I don't get up there and do a cold classical stuff. So, right, yeah. You know, it's all about finding your own little niche. Choreography is an important element of dance. How is it put together? What do you have to consider for choreography? Heaps of things, man. But choreography is so important because it's like. Colouring in a, like a colouring in book, you go to Pizza Hut and you can colour in the lines, <laughs> and that's fun. But wouldn't you rather draw the picture and then colour it in and do the whole thing? And that's what we found. We both come from. I come from freestyling. She comes from ballet and contemporary. But there's something about making what you're doing that really pays off. Now I'm not sure if that answered your question, but that's how I feel about choreography. I think it's very important in that way. It's you're creating and then you're doing. And what you need to take into account is like the people, the music, yeah. right? Like what do we do when we get out when we start choreography? Well, sometimes it comes from a song that you really like the song. You're like, oh my god, we need to use this. Yeah. Sometimes it comes from an idea like, I want to do an astronaut dance. And yeah, then, yeah. Like all different things. And and people too, you know, like it's like I want to do, I want to choreograph as a hip hop artist. I want to do something gangster with two ballet dancers. That that intrigues me. Mm. You know, so it's 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 heaps of things, bro. It's a it's an awesome question. There's so many things to take into account, but. The main thing is just creativity, you know, that's what we're there for. So what would you say makes the choreography amazing and outstanding? Um, individuality, like something different, something that no one else has done, yeah. thought about, yeah. Putting your own kind of spin on everything. Yeah, like my, most people would say, like as far as choreographic intent, you need highs, you need lows, you need to move around the stage, you need a straddle jump, you need some low hip hop movement, but that's just, that's choreography. But as far as making it magical, it's that X factor. It's, it's doing something funny, it's having a story, it's having a relationship, it's making people cry, it's making people laugh. It's about that, you know? Because you can be a crap dancer, but you can make someone laugh and that's gonna get you through. Choreography, let's break it down. Phrasing is the grouping together of a series of small steps, usually as a bar of eight. To create a whole dance piece, the phrases are just repeated, manipulated, changed up and added to in a similar style to writing music. A motif. This is the main dance step, gesture or idea from which the whole dance is created. Emotion. The emotion behind each movement really helps tell the story. For example, heavy and strong and fast movements for a struggle or light and free and soft movements for love. Spatial awareness means to be aware to use the space in an interesting way, not just dancing in one spot, high dancing, low, right, left, and using staging and props. Performance. So this is when the dancer gets to add their own unique flair into the dance. 
Did you know that if you were a dancer 50 years ago, you would have to read dance notation from paper like sheet music, as if you were learning the piano? That's right, Hannah. But because it is now so easy to just film a dance and watch it back, there's no need to write it down. Just play the dance recording, pause, and practice. You know what's a good idea? It's often to have, like, two lunches. Rather than filling up on a whole lot of snack foods, when we then get caught up on these things, I would be packing a lunchbox like what you have, but if you're going to after school training for football or netball or dancing or whatever you're doing, I would be having nearly like a second lunchbox. So I might have another half a sandwich in it, might have some dry biscuits with a spread in it, might have a muffin you've made at home or a um, sultana or a date mu um, muffin or scone or something like that, might have a tub of yogurt, or if, go, if you're going to be lucky enough to come home first before you go to your class, baked beans on toast, scrambled egg in the microwave on toast, um, might be a bowl of cereal like you have for breakfast, could be a bowl of soup. So instead of a lot of snack foods, I'd go for meal foods before your training. Okay, thanks. It is vital for a dancer to look after their body. Without it, they can't dance. They need to have stamina so they can dance for long periods of time with strength and also flexibility to perform difficult dance moves. Rest periods and nutrition are very important. Remember that dancing is a sport where injuries do happen, in which case recovery time is crucial to getting you back on your feet and it prevents further injuring yourself. Yes. Is the training really tough? Yeah, <laughs> it is tough, you know, it's not for the um, faint of, faint of mind, so, um, you know, you train um, six days a week when you're in the Australian Valley School or wherever school you go to. Um, and then again in the company, every day you're rehearsing for whatever show you're going to do. So, um, you know, you can't be afraid of hard work. <laughs> yeah. There's probably not much more I can add to that. <laughs> so with all the tough training, how, would, how do you take care of your body with all like the food and the training? Yeah. Uh, we do a lot of, um, I mean, I personally do a lot of strength work and um, Pilates is another great thing that keeps us in shape. Um, and we have great uh, injury prevention programs that keep us from, you know, hurting ourselves and um, keeping our bodies in shape. Yeah, I mean, it's important to get the right nutrition, sort of, uh, just to fuel your body, you know, because it's getting exhausted and you sort of need those foods that are going to give you energy. So that's probably a big part of keeping yourself healthy and, like we've said, Pilates and a bit of outside gym activity always helps. I dance and you work with footballers, so how's the diet different? Okay, so we still have some of the same principles like preparing before training, what to eat afterwards for recovery, but they probably have greater volumes and that would be one of the biggest differences. So it might be things like for you and them is to have some carbohydrate before training. So it's making sure you've um, fueled yourself with some fruit or a banana, or it could be um, a glass of milk or a sandwich, something like that. They would be the same, but some of them might just have larger amounts. It depends how long you're gonna dance for though. You yeah. might need just as much. So in some ways that's the same. Hydration might be something that's a bit different. Um, because their game often goes for two hours and it's about making sure that they've had enough to drink because if they don't, they're going to cramp. But again, a dancer still needs to worry about that as well. So they're probably, lots of ways, very similar. Um, so you mentioned recovery foods. What does that mean? And so within about half an hour after exercise, your enzymes in your body are really keen, a bit like little Pac-Man, you might not remember <laughs> that game, but they go around and chomp up to try and get all the glucose in to replace what you've just burnt. So we want to eat something within half an hour. So those recovery foods could be even things that we've got in front of us here, like the bananas, the pear. Um, we, we want something that's got some carbohydrate and protein that's going to get in quickly. It might be a time that I allow you to have a couple of your lollies, mm -hmm. and then it might be a pre-made milk drink um, that's already got some carbohydrate and protein in it. It might be a cheese sandwich, could be a meat sandwich, might be um, a handful of dried fruit and nuts. So the idea is some protein and carbohydrate and fluid, so and some water afterwards, and maybe some electrolytes in that water as well. 
If you get to study dance at secondary school or university, you'll learn all about the health needs of dancers, such as nutrition, or about the bones and the muscle groups in your bodies, and how to dance safely. Being involved with a dance school is a fantastic way to get an opportunity to perform. One of the most amazing jobs that a dancer can have is to be a part of a dance company. This opportunity is only given to the most talented and dedicated dancers. Contemporary dancers often have an agent who submits them for auditions. Head to Ausdance website or Star Now to promote yourself or find work. Please always use general safety rules for the internet and have adult supervision and permission when creating any online profiles. Also, have the adult submit you for suitable work and have them speak on your behalf to the people offering you the job. Make sure you research the people offering you the work. And remember, you need to be prepared, have a headshot, a dance photo, and a resume to audition. Because the show must go on. Now, after all your sweat and tears and your perseverance and dedication, just think about the payoff and the reward, standing out there on a pitch black stage with the applause from the audience and the spotlight shining down on you. And of course, the biggest gift of all is to share your story through dance to your audience. Uh, now, since you two are in the company, what's it like going on tour with the company? Um, going on tour is one of the most exciting parts of the job actually uh, because we get to go all around Australia and we also get to go overseas so this year we're actually heading over to America um, so that's really exciting. Um, it's also you know um, you sometimes miss home so it's you have to weigh up you know both both sides of it um, but exploring new cities is so much fun so yeah. Yeah I mean me personally, I've not seen much of Australia at all, but since I joined the company, I've seen so much more. We've been to, you know, all the major cities. Yeah, and every just, capital city. It's just great fun to get to know those places. Mm -hmm. Dancing, like any art form, requires passion, dedication and perseverance, which means you need to look after yourself really well because you need to keep on working and training even when you're exhausted. To keep yourself updated on all things dance, head online and check out blogs and mailing lists from people like Paul Mercurio, the Australian Dance Company and Chunky Move. And for some light reading, how about checking out the Dance Australia magazine? Oz Dance website can keep you informed in many ways, so jump on there and have a look. Also, head to our website and find our favourite dance links. Thanks for watching this episode of Creative Kids. We hope you feel inspired and excited to get up and get dancing. See, See you next, next time. time. And remember, dance, dance like, like no one, one is watching. watching. Bye. <laughs> well, thank you guys so much for doing this. It's yeah, cool. thank you. Yeah. It was awesome. It was a pleasure to meet you. Keep doing the good work yep. and have us back because we get bored. <laughs> um, I just want to play a little theme song for the show, just if you guys Jess, if you want to dance with, um, why don't you teach him a dance? Put with my singers on. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, we'll just play you out.